Now let's take a look at the first few problems on sapling homework nine. So the first problem is giving you the structure of an amino acid, alanine, and it wants you to identify which functional groups are common to all amino acids. And this structure of the amino acid is drawn in a way that looks really weird. This is not the standard way that we draw amino acids. So just kind of ignore the drawing and answer the question underneath it. What is common? Which of those functional groups is common to all amino acids? Um, next question, and the next few questions are like this. Two, three, four, five. You've got two, three, four, five. It gives you the structure of an amino acid. It asks you to identify it. And so that means you're going to be looking at the R group, and you're going to be looking at a table of amino acids and just matching it up, um, matching up the R group with what you see on the table. The next part of all these questions is asking you to identify the three letter abbreviation for the amino acid. Now, if you want to hold off on that, we'll start using the three letter abbreviations for amino acids in section 21.4, um, but it's actually not tricky. It's definitely something you could start doing right now. So you are going to have somewhere in your textbook or on the internet or wherever a table of abbreviations for amino acids. This is not a table out of your book, so don't pay attention to the 3.2 thing. That's not relevant to you. Um, but this is a list of the three letter and one letter abbreviations for all the amino acids. And most of them make sense. Some of them don't make a ton of sense, but most of them make sense. Um, so consult this or something like this, because if you just Google this on the, on the internet, amino acid abbreviation, you're going to come up with a whole bunch of tables that you can use to help you out with these questions right here. Um, so this particular amino acid, if I'm looking at it, it looks to me like hmm, histidine, uh, looking at its R group. And the three-letter abbreviation is probably HIS. That's probably all that it is. Oh, apparently it's... Oh, oh, I didn't scroll down. There's more. The one-letter symbol for histidine. Uh, the one-letter symbol for histidine is H. Oh, now you know to scroll down. <laughs> I'm guessing that all those problems have that same thing. Scroll down. Okay, so this question is asking you to classify these amino acids as neutral, basic, or acidic. Um, some of them, they're giving you the structure of the amino acid, like this guy right here. I can see, because it has COO minus, I can see that that is an acidic amino acid, so I know where to put that. And this one over here, I can see it's R group. Even though it's drawn on the side, I can see it's R group is CH2 and then a benzene ring, so that's neutral. Um, this guy right here looks like a polar amino acid. Um, and then some of them are given to you by their abbreviations, and some of them are given to you by their names, and you're just going to sort them into the boxes um, based on the structure of the R group. For question number seven, oops, oh no, oh please stop, sapling, please stop doing that. So for question number seven, it asks you to modify the structure to show its Zwitter ion form. And this amino acid is like written mirror image from the way that I would normally write it. But remember in the Zwitter ion form, we have COO minus. So you want to fix that COO minus. And then you also have NH3 plus. So you want to fix that as well. Did you see what just happened there? So see, I had the NH, and then when I go to put the positive charge on the nitrogen, look what it does. It sets that positive charge right on top of the hydrogen as if the hydrogen is not even there. It hides it from you, but you know that it's there. It's not making the hydrogen disappear. So whatever you do, don't come along and add another hydrogen in there because that's going to make the answer wrong. That hydrogen is there. Sapling is just covering it up with the positive charge. Don't let that get to you. What do we have next? Um, so here we have modify isoleucine to show the structure at pH 1 and pH 13. And this is what we did all over the place in section 21.3. So first of all, you're going to look at isoleucine. It's neutral, which means its R group is not going to be affected at all by the pH. And the R group just to try to keep things lively, 
the R group is sticking up in, in here. So the R group is all up, up here and not down normal, like where you would normally see it. So you're just working on this part of the molecule and this part of the molecule out here and asking yourself, pH one, that's a low pH. What type of charge is allowed in a low pH? Or pH 13, that's a high pH. What type of charge is allowed at a high pH? Modify the structure, just like what we were doing in 21.3.